Hi, I'm Gregory Haney. I will be playing Nagzima Jackson in Tu Wong Fu, the musical at Hope Mill Theatre. Hi, Gregory. Thank you for joining us on Theatre and Tonic. So let's start at the very beginning of your journey on this show. What kind of drew you to auditioning for this role when you first heard about it? So um, my husband mentioned it to me, and then my fiance, he mentioned it to me and I was like, oh, okay, maybe. And then my friend from America was like, um, you do know that they're doing uh, Tu Wong Fu. And it was probably maybe a couple of weeks apart from each other. And I think that we were planning our wedding, so I didn't really hear him. Um, and then my friend was like, no, they're, 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 they're casting now. I was like, wait, what? Oh. And it's no, you know, it's one of those things where like when the people you love are like, oh no, you look good, you look good. And then that one person says, oh, you look great today. And you're like, I do. <laughs> That's how that was. So then I reached out to my agent and I was like, I really, I, I need to be Nagzima. Like it, it, it's been a, a long, a long conversation and dream of mine. Um, and then I got the self-tape through and then it coincided the same week of my wedding. So I got married on a Saturday. The self-tape needed to be in by Friday morning at 10 o'clock. So how that happened, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> It's called fate. <laughs> so obviously this is kind of based on the 1995 cult classic film. So for a lot of people that are kind of intrigued about it, what can audiences expect, especially if they are fans of the film, what can they expect from this musical? I mean, it translates even better onto stage, right? It's like, it has all the components to make a beautiful uh, musical. The story is about compassion and love and, um, it's about community. It's also about self-worth, which I think that um, a lot of the time we forget that, yes, we might be dressing up and we might be portraying this character and the art of drag is at the forefront, but it's really about self-worth and like the journey of individuality. Um, so yeah, it's going to translate. I actually said this the other day. I said, if if you love camp, then Tu Wong Fu is a camp delicatessen with all the toppings. Love that. Great quote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll use that quote. Um, so obviously, can you tell us a little bit more then about your character in particular? Because how do you develop a role that's kind of so well known through the film and make it kind of your own? Well, I think it's difficult, I'll say that, um, because she is so iconic. Wesley Snipes did such an amazing job with bringing her to life. And it's hard to it's hard to make other choices. But I think that because Nogzima, I think, is rooted in strong black women, that I think that, you know, there is a universal there's a universal like language that black women have. So as long as I'm saying true to those who inspire me, Nogzima will be mine. And whomever plays it like later down the road, say it goes to a high school or grade school or community theater or even Broadway, like mm -hmm. It, it it just has it already built in because we know those people so well. Yeah, and obviously you touch on the fact that this story is very much about the kind of drag culture community. And, you know, over the past few years, I definitely think we've seen a lot more exposure on that, haven't we, through things like RuPaul and other musicals that have kind of started to surface. Why do you think it's important that, you know, productions like Tu Wong Fu continue to kind of be exposed and kind of been put on stage? Well, because I think like fundamentally drag is an art, right? I, I think that all the drag queen, um, uh, all the drag queen shows, all the podcasts, all the TV shows that are coming out is beautiful because it's just shining an even larger light of the community that has built up a lot of pop culture. Mm. So I think the conversation that Tu Wong Fu is having within that is that because it's the 90s and a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of drag trends started and began there in New York City in that time. I think it's like an homage, it's paying homage to like our, our beginnings. So I think that it's it's different than Priscilla, it's different than Kinky, it, it has its own lane, its own voice. It's different than Lacage even. And it has its own lane, its own voice that I think really snuggles right into the rest of the conversation of drag. Definitely. And I think as well with what comes with drag is there's still a lot of hate towards it, isn't there? There's still a lot of negative conversation. So is that something as a company that you're kind of 
really touching on as well whilst you're developing this piece and something you're kind of aware of as well that there is still a community out there that are very much against it yes I mean the thing is is that I think um Douglas has really led us to understand that yes it's an art form but it comes from a true place it unlocks something in you um which I think that the company has felt from the very beginning uh the first day of rehearsal we had an hour and a half of heels and it's like everybody from like I've worn hills before. There were people who used it their first time, and they're like six inch like pleasers. And so it was really hard. And I think what happens is that it takes it takes the veil off, and you become very vulnerable in that. And I think if if we maintain that, and we are doing that, that it just then allows the audience to understand that like everyone's human, and a heel and a, a, a wig and a, a few pounds of makeup does not take that humanity away no definitely not and obviously in this story as well there is kind of serious issues which it touches on so how have you dealt with it as an actor um to touch on them um I think with care definitely and I think also it's care through comedy but also care through self-expression and self um what's the word that I'm thinking of self-exploration because it's like Yes, it might have to deal with um, domestic violence, but it's also allowing the character to find her own strength. And it's about the strength within women. And it's the the love, it's too long food. Douglas said it a couple um, on our first day, that it's a love letter to women. And I think that's even more important because we're not, like with me, I'm paying respect to the strong black women in my life. Mm -hmm. And with that representation, I hope to do this. I hope that I, that whoever's watching understands that. Definitely. And you're not the only person in this production, of course, you kind of work in as a trio. So what is it like kind of working and developing the show opposite Peter and Pablo? It has been amazing. We actually got on like a house on fire. It's it's like we're three little schoolgirls, um, and our, our dynamic is actually that of the three characters. And it, for me, I, I, I love the fact that I get to go on this journey with them and yeah, we like we help each other out. We are like, oh, we'll push back a little bit more here or but a little space. Like it's like it's it's just really a lovely like unity. Brilliant. I'm really looking forward to it. And is there a moment in the show that's really poignant for you particularly? I mean, my character has my character has all the all the all the famous lines. So I'm very happy that I get to I get to say them. But it's just it's it's like the different take on them. And and Douglas really gives a lot of a, like a wide berth for us to like try things and figure out where it's where it sits. But a favorite part, I mean, little Latin boy in drag, why are you crying? That's gonna that's gotta be my fame, my, my my most famous quote. And why should people come and see the production during its time at the Hope Mill Theatre? And do you hope there's kind of a future for it? I absolutely hope that there's a future for it. I think that having its world debut at Hope Mill Theatre is brilliant, just because I think it's such an amazing um, theatre house that puts on new, exciting work that I think people are, get excited to, to see. Um, I also think that people should come and see it because... It's good for the family. It answers a lot of questions. It humanizes drag more. Um, I think that it's a beautiful story. And if you don't like laughing, if you don't like big belly laughs, or maybe even shedding a tear, then maybe you shouldn't come to see the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to come see the show. <laughs> Just stick it, like put up with it and come along. So yes. A last question for you then, Gregory. Um, a bit of a quirky one. If you had to get a tattoo of one line in the script or a song or from a song in the show, what would you have? Oh, this is this would be my from my song, um, Noxima's Dream. And uh, uh, it's it's about my dream of going to Hollywood. And I think um, we start with a close-up. I think that would be my line. Love it. Thank you so much for your time to chat, Gregory, about Tu Wong Fu. I'm really looking forward to seeing it at the Hope Mill Theatre. Thank you. Thank you.